gray man. This was a, a point of discussion that I had with a, with a couple of friends offline, and they said, "Hey, Stoke man, can can you share some some knowledge on what your experience is, and what your thoughts, what your approach is on the gray man?" Because I'm out here, I'm I'm looking at some videos, I'm reading some books, and hearing some dialogue and stuff. And like, to be honest with you, man, it sounds like way too hocusy pocusy, too like three letter agency type stuff, and uh, can, can, can we talk about this? So I did have some offline conversations. I want to try to have a, an online conversation, if you will, um, with with all of y'all, and look to get your thoughts as well down below as far as how you approach uh, your operational environment, whether you're uh, you know in an urban environment or whether you're out in uh, in the rural countryside. So here we go. So man, for friends, it is. I mean, it's good to see you. Uh, I hope that you all are doing well. Um, things are going well here. Hopefully, we have a little snowstorm coming in. Uh, but you know, I think I think the gray man. It, it is something that uh, I, it comes and goes in cycles. You know, I see videos pop up on my feed, and and I'll watch a couple of them, and I listen to some folks talk about going gray or being the gray man and, and how it's better or worse than being the tactical man or or whatever the case is. And you know, for the most part, most of them are okay, but they only kind of touch on the surface. And that's why I wanted, want to get a little bit deeper in this video, right? Because I don't think that the surface level uh, is enough. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk to you from my perspective, from my experience some of which, you know, as it directly relates to going gray or being gray, is from some operational deployments that I've been on. Not just talking about going to the box, but some of the stuff I did a little bit earlier in my career when I was in an anti-terrorism unit in the Marine Corps. So I want to come to you from the, that perspective of that kind of my training and that my experience and from, from the things that I've encountered firsthand. Because I think that when we when we approach it from a, a deeper level, the meaning really starts to come out. And uh, and I think some folks who've never had to actually be gray, you know, end up just becoming a teacher. And you know what they say about teachers: those who teach teach because they can't. Right on the money. So, uh, you know, I learned years ago, and, and we didn't call it gray man, right? We didn't call it going gray. We didn't, we didn't do any of these sorts of things. You know, we're the, the, our language was uh, counterintelligence, intelligence, counterreconnaissance, reconnaissance. You know, it was it had more of a, of a tactical flavor. But a lot of the things that, that I learned uh, in my earlier years, really do formulate and begin to come out when we're talking about going gray. And it's even more more relevant, if you will, uh, especially considering today's environment. And I think with all of the political unrest that we've seen, whether we're looking at uh, cities out here on the left coast like Portland or Seattle, or whether we're looking more mid-east like Minneapolis or even some, uh, some places in the southeast, right, we've seen a lot of unrest. And uh, certainly with events up in the Northeast and even in the capital. We've had moments of dread. We've had moments of watching live feed videos of cars being stopped on the freeway. And you can imagine the sense of dread and the horror of folks who are in these cars just trying to make it home safely. We've had natural disasters that have completely cut off and isolated people from getting home. How do you survive something like that? How do you get through something like that? And part of one of the answers is being able to go gray. But going gray, you know, it comes across like uh, being a, a tree in a forest, you're just blending in, disappear. You know, when I say, I don't know about you, but uh, I have like song lyrics in my head, and I have like movie quotes, movie lines in my head that come out all the time. So when I say things like blend in, disappear, I go to, to Indiana Jones and 
uh, being in Venice. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, uh, here's the thing. So we talk about going gray as if we're all we're trying to do is blend in, right? Just, just blend in with the normal population. And so, you know, uh, and I do it at the end. I'm going to come back to this and give you some key points of discussion for how you can do this and, and incarnate this. But where we're missing it is, is we don't understand that to truly become gray means that you're, you're controlling the narrative, right? You're aware. You're intentional in everything that you do. You understand what the perceptions are. You understand what the reality is. You understand, based off of your experience and your knowledge and your wisdom, what people are looking for, how they are going to respond to you, and you're doing nothing but you're controlling that narrative. Every action that you take, every article of clothing that you wear, your speed and your speech, everything is done intentionally. To leave the impression that you want to leave. Now, yes, most times it's going to come across like you don't want to be remembered. And so we do certain things in order to do that. But we can't stop there. That We, we can't live here at this foundation and, and think that we have it all together. We need to fully understand the grasp and understand how all of this comes together. Does that make sense? So if I wanted to, like, I, you know, if you want to go to, because this is how it comes across, right? If you want, if you want to blend in, if you want to go gray and you're in New York, you know, you wear a suit and tie. I mean, that may be kind of true, but what if I need to do something different um, and, and I need to be remembered or not noticed because of something? Because you, you can not blend in and not be noticed, Right. If I walk around a city street in a suit and tie and I'm moving with the flow of traffic, like I may not be noticed. That's true. But what if I need to, to linger? How do I do that? You know, a couple approaches might include, uh, you know, uh, having on some, some dirty clothes and, and looking more like a, a vagabond. Or maybe I want to put on a uh, reflective vest hard hat, have on some work boots and some jeans, and have a clipboard in my hand. Odds are, nobody's going to bat an eye if I'm just lingering around, taking some notes, talking on a, on a CB radio or something, or you know, a ham radio, a, a LMR. I, I'm certainly not blending in, right? I'm not blending in. But all of my actions are intentional. I'm getting the response that I wanted, which was for people to leave me alone. And nobody's going to re remember much other than, yeah, they saw a dude in a hard hat. But they didn't give him a second look because it's, it's normal to see that. Right, friends, does that make sense? You're controlling this narrative, right? Your words, your actions, your appearance, everything is intentional. And you're leaving the impression that you want to be left. Yes, if you want to blend in and, and not be noticed, you know, in, in South Florida, you may want to wear pastel colors, not subdued colors, right? Some shorts and a t-shirt, some flip-flops. Same thing in Hawaii, right? You may want to wear a little bit more bright colors, right? If you're in the, the Southwest, you may want to wear some boots and some cowboy jeans or Right? Does that make sense, friends? So, you know, yes, if you want to be uh, unnoticed and blend in with the local populace in, like, Florida, you know, you may want to wear pastels and some shorts and a T-shirt or something. You know, if you're in, in the South or the South, you know, East or West, you know, you may want to wear some, some boots and jeans and, and a ball cap, drive a big truck. It's jacked up and it's only two-wheel drive. <laughs> Right, those that that it may be normal population, but it's more than more than that. And and I will certainly give you some tips at the end of of 
more than what you need to do other than just your dress. Because I think we need to understand and be ready to, to, to do some different things. And the only way to do that is to have the proper mindset. Now, I've talked about it before that we have uh, some different colors that will relate to our mindset. And most of us operate in, in, in white, right? We're completely unaware of our surroundings. We're just stumbling through life. We have no idea what the consequences of anything are, right? TV's blurring in our heads, and we're not even thinking and asking the television question. People are telling us things, and we're just accepting them, right? I think you could probably agree that that's, that's most of, of your neighbors, right? And then we have yellow, and this is where we need to operate. This is where we need to, to maintain on a day-to-day basis. We are aware of our surroundings. Head is on a swivel. Live and operate in the yellow. You're, you're not focused or fixated on anything, but you're looking at everything. Now, once something catches your attention, we move from yellow into orange. We're not engaged in this target yet, but we're aware of it. And once we begin to engage it, we go to red. And then after that, we go straight back to yellow, right? Because the, the other thing that we can fall into, uh, the, the, the polar opposite of white is, of course, black. And black is, you know, complete panic. Our whole mindset is disrupted. We're distraught. We can't make a decision. We can't live in the black. We can't live in the, in the white. And the gray man lives in the yellow, right? You live in the yellow, You're aware of your surroundings. You know that it's probably not a good idea in your neighborhood to be out at 2 o'clock in the morning driving down a particular street. Because odds are there's going to be, you know, some drug dealing going on. So because you're aware of this, you don't go there. But if you did need to go there, you have the, the wherewithal within you because you're not living in the white to travel in a particular direction at a particular speed. You know what, how to move on foot if you need to, how to dress so that you won't draw any attention or so that you'll draw the attention that you want to be drawn. And so maybe in your vehicle you have a kit um, I, I know some folks who carry some uh, hard hats and reflective vests, right? Maybe you have uh, some clipboard and some pen and paper. Maybe it's part of your, your go bag because you know that you're driving to work in uh, a, a suit and tie and you have you know dress shoes on. And what you need to be prepared to do is be able to go gray in a moment's notice. So what do you have in your vehicle that will help you blend in a more urban environment if you're wearing just nothing but a suit and tie? You know, you need to be able to have some shoes, right? Maybe a, a different coat, maybe some different pants. You need to be able to change your appearance to, to be able to leave the impression that you want to be left. Now, on all of this note, right, so there are a few things that we can do and throw into our kit bag that if we're trying to go gray and we're trying to, to not be noticed, that we can do. These are, these are tools that we can put in our kit bag. We can pull them back out and, uh, and be aware of them. So the first one, of course, is our, our clothing uh, attire, or our attire, right? We need to understand what the impact is. So as a general rule of thumb, if you're going to go gray, you're going to want to be more subdued in nature. And that's why they call it going gray, because you're not black or white. You're, you're just in the middle. You're, you're, you're not wearing brightly colored clothes. If nobody in your area wears hats, you're not wearing a hat. If nobody in your area wears jeans you wear, and they, everybody's wearing slacks, then you have on slacks. If you're up here in the Pacific Northwest, many have a plaid shirt on, right? 
where you roll your jeans. You know, there's like one of two two ways. You're either hipster or or, or just a regular Joe. <laughs> Maybe you're grunge or whatever, right? So you understand that. You understand where that mix is so that you can cut down in the, in the middle of the most likely person that you're going to meet in your area. We also need to understand how to how to how to how to talk, our speed. You know, we need to be aware that if we're talking overly fast because we're excited again because we're not maintaining being in the yellow, we're, we're fading into, into black and our anxiety is coming out. So we need to understand and, and be and maintain control and awareness of our speech patterns. In some places, you may need to talk fast, right? If you talk slow or with a drawl, that may make you stand out. So you need to understand how to raise your tempo to match what's around you. If you're walking down uh, a street, understand the flow of traffic. In some places, you know, in the morning, people are traveling generally towards the heart of the city. And in the afternoon, people are moving away from the city. Understand and move with the patterns of traffic. Because when you don't do that, when you start bumping heads into people, you're going to stand out. Don't think that just because you wear a a non-tactical backpack that you're not going to stand out with a backpack on. Believe me, you're going to stand out if you have a backpack on. Somebody has a backpack and somebody else has a need, they're going to think that you probably have something that they can use. I'm not telling you not to wear a backpack, just be aware that just because it's not a tactical backpack that everything's okay. And that's why it's important to, to maybe have some caches laid out. Coats are appropriate. Have on a coat and have on all your items that you need in your coat, on your person. Control the narrative. Because you can imagine, again, like if you're driving through uh, an urban area and something happens and you have to exit your vehicle and now you're on foot, you're in a much more dangerous situation. You don't have the resources or the security around you that you had when you're in your truck or your car. Everything's a lot more dangerous now. And now you're moving through the crowds. And you need to you need to not look like you're looking for trouble. You need to not look like you're panicking. You need to not look like you're a part of what's going on. But maybe that you're not opposing what's going on either. So you bob and weave until you can get to the next city block or the next city block over so that you can begin to take some more evasive actions. Get into a hide until you can E and E. This is what really going gray is all about. It's not just about walking the avenue or whatever and, and, and... Wearing a gray hoodie. It's a mindset and it's a mentality that I know more folks out there have. We just don't always have the language to put into it. So I hope you enjoyed the content of this one. If you did, and you think somebody else may enjoy it as well, then then consider sharing it. Right, um, and, and and let's broaden our conversation. Let's broaden the community and enlarge it so that we can continue to learn from each other. Leave some comments down below. That way we can continue to, to, to generate a conversation about gray and going gray and some different scenarios and different things that we can put in our kit bag. And we will keep this conversation rolling. As always, until then, you stay out there and you stay stoked. <laughs>